Hi, I'm Professor Goins, and welcome to the Math Professor's YouTube channel. If you're looking for videos explaining topics in pretty much any college mathematics course, please consider subscribing and then checking out our playlists, watching some videos, liking, commenting, sharing those videos. Any of those interactions are greatly appreciated because it does help us to reach a bigger audience and then ultimately to help us grow. Again, like I mentioned before, we're not trying to be professional YouTubers here. We're just trying to see what could happen if we reach more people. And we do think the videos could be helpful to not only our students, but to the rest of the um, you know, math community as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at the current video. Uh, I want to take a look at something that's related to your statistics course, but not something that you could really compute until you take a Calculus 3 course. And when you take statistics, you're going to talk about the normal distribution, standard normal distribution. And one thing that you are told is that the area under that curve, being a probability distribution, of course, is exactly 1. Well, certainly, calculus, and specifically Calc 3, is generally not a prerequisite for an intro stats course. So we just take it on face value and say, all right, cool, the area is 1. But then in, in Calc, we have more more tools and we say okay well let's actually compute that. Um, so what I'm going to do is rather than computing the integral of this exact function right here I'm going to look at what uh, the base function which is e to the negative x squared. Now through a u substitution and through just factoring out a constant I can go from this function right here to this function down here something of that form again just using appropriate transfer uh, properties of integration with u sub followed by factoring out a constant and really all this function is right here compared to this function is going to be a horizontal shift and then a horizontal either stretch or compression depending on the value of sigma and then also a vertical stretch compression depending on the value of this constant which of course is based on the value of sigma um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at the value of the improper integral from minus infinity to infinity of this function right here. And I'm going to say, let's let i equal the integral from minus infinity to infinity of e to the negative x squared dx. And what I want to do is I want to compute the value of that integral. Now, the technique is kind of weird. I don't think I've ever presented it in a Calc 3 course and then had the students, had nobody had any issues with it. People are like, well, how does that actually work? That seems really weird. It kind of seems like you're just making things up as you go, um, which I could, I, I kind of, I'm not going to say I agree with them, but it, it does kind of have that impression. Well, what I'm going to do, rather than computing i, I'm going to compute i squared. i squared well, that just means I'm going to take the original integral and square, right? Well, when I square something, that means I have two factors of it. All right, that's what a power of two means. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, the value of x or the variable x is referred to as a dummy variable, meaning I can replace that with any letter I like and the value of the definite integral doesn't change. Therefore, I'm going to leave the first integral alone and then within the second integral, I'm going to change the value or change the variable x to y. Again, think of it like a u sub, and then just nothing changes. e to the negative y squared dy. Okay, so so far, there shouldn't be anything weird. All right? I just squared both sides, I wrote out both factors, and then I used a dummy variable. Now, this is where it kind of starts to get maybe a little bit strange, and students kind of are like, wait, what's happening here? Now, keep in mind that this integral right here is a constant. Okay, now I can't pretend I could cover it up, right? If I put on the other side of the, there you go. This right here, this number right here that's represented by my, 
by my, underneath my hand is just a constant, and constants can be pulled inside of integrals. Therefore, I can take this number, I don't want to call it an integral to kind of confuse it with this integral, so I'm going to say this number can get brought inside, okay, so this is a number, squeaky marker, and I can bring that constant right there, giving me the following. This would be equal to, well, it's the integral from minus infinity to infinity of that constant. So I'll write this, you know, just to kind of set it apart, I'll write this integral smaller, negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative x squared dx. And again, I'll also kind of group it together. So I did take that constant and then the integrand to be e to the negative y squared dy, all right? Now, once again, with respect to this integral, this expression right here would be a constant. That means I can take this constant and I can pull it inside of this integral. Actually, I'll put it multiplication is commutative. I can put it anywhere I like, but I will put it right there. Okay, that gives me the following. Integral from minus infinity to infinity of the integral from minus infinity to infinity. Integrand to be e to the negative x squared, e to the negative y squared, dx, and then dy. Now let's look at what I have here. This is an iterated integral. This is a double integral. So on the next line, I'm going to go ahead and clean the side up. I'm going to rewrite that as a double integral. e to the negative x squared plus y squared as my new integrand. Now, <clears throat> as a single integral, if I look at this integral with respect to x, I can't compute that, right? That's the whole point is this original integral, we couldn't compute it. Well, we have a technique in Calc 3 that allows me to change coordinate systems. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go from, this is represented in the Cartesian coordinate system, so just the regular XY coordinate system, and I'm going to convert that to polar coordinates. And polar coordinates, again, let's first of all look at X goes minus infinity to infinity, Y goes minus infinity to infinity, and that represents the entire XY plane. Well, how do I represent the entire XY plane using polar coordinates. Well, the value of r, which again is a sort of um, radial distance from the origin, is certainly going to be greater than or equal to zero. But if I want to go out to the entire plane, that radius has to be unbounded. And therefore, I'll say it goes from zero to infinity. Of course, I had to erase the equal to sign because we can only be strictly less than infinity. And then again, that radial element can go an entire, you know, 360 or 2 pi. Therefore, it goes from 0 to 2 pi. All right. And now I can go ahead and I can, can convert this double integral in a Cartesian coordinate system to a double integral in a polar coordinate system. And this would give me integral from, well, since these are... Um, constant limits. In other words, they're not variable limits. I can integrate in either order. I'll go from 0 to infinity, 0 to 2 pi, e. Well, remember, x squared plus y squared is r squared. And then the differential conversion to go from dx dy to dr d theta, we get another factor of r, so r d 
dr d theta. Quick side comment that r comes from the Jacobian of the transformation, which you'll learn about when you look at substitution and double integrals. Okay, so now we have to compute this integral. And let's just kind of quickly glance at this to see that this is actually something we can compute. The first, oh, this is supposed to be, I reversed that should be d theta first. Because remember the differentials have to match the order of the in integration. So therefore, this would be d theta dr. All right, well notice that first of all, with respect to theta, there's no theta. So this is actually a constant with respect to that variable. And then with respect to r, um, I can actually just do a u sub. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and clean up the side, and then we'll finish off the integration. Integrations with respect to theta, since this is a constant, it's going to be the length of the interval, which is 2 pi. So 2 pi integral 0 to infinity of r e to the negative r squared dr. Okay. And we can go ahead and do a, we can do a u sub on that. U we'll say is negative r squared. And then du would be negative 2r dr. If u is 0, I'm sorry, if r is 0, take our original variable of integration. If r is 0, then u is 0. And if u, when u converges to infinity or u goes to infinity, then we see, ah, oops, my bad again, r, the original variable of integration, goes to infinity, then u would go to negative infinity. Okay, so that's going to be my substitution. I'll go ahead and let's plug things in. Well, first and foremost, the, let's do the limits of integration first. I see that the limits of integration are going to go from 0 to negative infinity. The 2 pi, well, I don't have any pi associated with my substitution, so I'm just going to leave a pi out front. Notice that my du is negative 2r dr. I've got a 2, I've got a dr, but I don't have a negative, so therefore I'd have to put a negative and then cancel it, which means I'll put a negative here, and then I'll put a negative here. This negative 2 is going to be part of my du, but this negative is going to have to carry along. And then e to the negative r squared, well, that would be e to the negative r squared was u, and then uh, du. Okay, so I've got an improper integral. Antiderivative of negative pi e to the u would be negative pi e to the u. And we evaluate from 0 to negative infinity. Remembering that evaluating at negative infinity means I'm taking that limit at infinity. And e to the negative infinity, in other words, e as the u approaches negative infinity, would be 0. And then minus the valuation at the lower limit of integration. If I plug 0 in, I get negative pi e to the 0, which is pi. Therefore, the value of the square of the integral is pi. And that means that the value of the area under the original bell curve e to the negative x squared all the way out to minus infinity to positive infinity is the square root of pi. Okay. And then again, using some constant manipulation of constants, we can show that the area under the standard normal distribution is 1, or the normal distribution is 1. Okay. Uh, thank you for watching, and please consider subscribing.